thing. That doesn't make any sense. Hi from Columbus. All right, y'all. Hold on a second. Oh, there we are. YouTube's being very fickle lately. Okay. So, if there are any kind of buffering issues or whatever, um, if there are any kind of buffering issues, please just go back and watch this because for whatever reason, it did the same thing with the fruit propagation video. Some people w said there was audio and video issues. Yes, there are times of charm. <laughs> Boom. Single man, what's up? So if it does do all that shenanigans, uh, just go back and watch the video because for whatever reason, whether it's it's some type of YouTube thing, and YouTube's been batting a thousand, and all of our technological gadgets have been batting a thousand, right. and our Adobe software. Which is why we're doing this live. <laughs> right, and we actually got our old Filmora software. Yeah. Just so that we could keep doing some videos because right. Adobe is disappointing us. Yeah. Phenomenally. Right. So and we've been dealing with all those struggles. This yes. Week. Woo! It's been crazy. So Poor Goob. I'm. I give him a lot of credit that he just doesn't quit because yeah. he just pumps in like. He'll <laughs> pump in like four hours a day talking to Adam at Adobe on the phone. Yeah. And he's so kind to him, and if it may, was but me, we're I done mean, with Adobe and we're going to... the English. We went back to Fillmore. But anyway, that's not the topic for tonight. As you all know, some of you know, who have been following our channel for a little while, that some things have... One thing has changed. Mike, all right. Don't do Adobe. Me and Adobe. And, right. and before we get into the topic, we're just going to say... That everybody's going to be nice and respectful and i think we tree was already on here earlier she's on here again yes be respectful we're just going to all be grown-ups and we're going to be respectful um and we want to have this conversation once and we're moving on y'all this will not be the start of like another whole series of why I only cover on Sundays or anything like that. This is like a one-time topic. We're going to talk about it, and we are moving on with the rest of our life. So, Mr. Soulless Chicken Gal, Simply Jan, Nature's Basic Farm. Good evening. The Living Garden. Well, we got all kinds of uh, patrons on here. We got yeah, the Music out. Well. Oh, the Country Homestead Preacher. Off the mic. Awesome. All right, good to have y'all on this evening. We're gonna jump in. Let's jump in. All right, let's we're gonna jump right in. in. So, so let's tell the story. So, let, let, did I hear a child? Okay, let's share our story. All right, let's share our story. So, it was about two or three weeks ago. I keep hearing. I hear a child. Miss Butterfly's awake. You tell the story. Oh no! I'll be right that back. was why we were going to do oh. this early because it's okay. It's okay. Miss Butterfly. JM is here to save. The Joy's day. mom is here to save the day, y'all. Yeah. Okay, so let's tell the story. So, so let me tell you a story. A couple of weeks ago. Okay, a couple of weeks ago. So I was starting to explain this before. How is before we start? How is the audio and video right now? Is everybody doing good? Hearing us? Seeing us? I don't see anybody saying buffering. Everybody's saying everything's good, good. Good, good. Sweet, sweet. Okay. Tell the story. Okay. Perfect. Wow. I've never been told that. So, anyway. So, we get asked a lot of um, Hebrew Roots questions, what I refer to as Hebrew Roots. And so, I was doing a lot of study to give an answer on that, why we don't do the Sabbath, why we don't eat kosher, um, why we don't celebrate feast days. And our different biblical positions, uh, you know, New Testament positions, whatever you call it. And so I was studying a lot of these online teachers. Um, and, and I mean, I was studying a lot of the, there's a lot of Hebrew roots, um, Messianic Jewish temples in our area. Mm -hmm. And um, I, bumped, I bumped into these guys quite a bit, street preaching and different things, black Hebrew Israelites, and also. Sacred Namers, um, it all started with this guy, Joshua Native Kirk. He was a right. Sacred Namer, Oneness, Pentecostal, 
Uh, yeah, so all that stuff. So long story short, I'm Too studying all this go. stuff. Right. And so I'm putting together this video and I'm going through the scriptures and I'm looking into all this stuff on Judaism, Judeo-Christian, blah, 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 you know, and how counterintuitive and actually oxymoron the whole term Judeo-Christian is mm -hmm. and how Judaism wasn't even established historically until after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD when the rabbis took the Talmud and, and literally claimed it to be the Torah. And so I'm studying these guys, Jim Staley, Michael Rood, uh, Jonathan Kahn, um, uh, Sid Roth, uh, Zach Bauer, insert the name here. And, and a lot of them are referencing the Midrash and the Talmud. And so I start looking into the Midrash and the Talmud, these oral traditions, you know, that kind of supplant the scripture and all these different things. And, um, and I'm looking at all this stuff they add to, you know, like what you do with your ribbons and your phyl phylacteries and, and, uh, and what to do when you go to the bathroom with this stuff. And what if you burp while you're praying and all this stuff trying to define, you know, and, and um, putting together the scriptures on the carnal versus the spiritual and how the old covenant was a carnal fleshly covenant with fleshly promises of a real physical present day land versus, you know, a future spiritual, you know, and just to compare the types and the shadows versus the reality, you know, the Sabbath versus Christ and the sacrifices versus Christ, and the feast days versus Christ. And as I'm going through all that, I start thinking about and pondering our positions on the head covering and how many of our modesty arguments with the head covering are all steeped in Jewish fables and, and Jewry and Judaistic practices about, you know, um, and between that and the actual direct application of First Corinthians 11 mm -hmm. and how there's, and, and the funny thing is, is that night, uh, me and Texas mom, we were going to bed and we we're laying down and we we're just talking and um, I said, you know, the problem is, is if you develop this position from 1 Corinthians for a woman of praying and prophesying, and so you're holding this position as this is why you head cover full time, you paint an impossible paradoxical position for the man that the man can absolutely never cover his head. Because the exact opposite, I mean, if we apply the verses in small context of the six verses there, Versus in the context of the whole chapter, which is what we're going to get into, and the church assembly and different things like that. If you apply that in the extracted context, a man could absolutely never wear a hat. It would just be just as inversely blasphemous, right? And then from a modesty standpoint, when the hair is exposed, it is immodest, which would be a sin, which would be considered nudity, so now that, hey, rain country. There you are. Um, now we can start. So if, you, if you're applying this secondary modesty position, which has to be indirectly inferred from very non-direct passages. Right. Um, in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament and that were not clearly defined. Mm -hmm. And a lot of assumptions have to be made. Sure. You're creating other paradoxical issues in the New Testament, mm -hmm. like um, Mary Magdalene washing Christ's feet with her hair. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, she, her either her head was covered and she uncovered it in front of everybody to wash Christ's feet, right? Creating, making herself naked in front of all these men and Christ continued to allow it so that being said so I, we started discussing this and then it just so happens as the Lord does a lot of times we were 
we were assembled together uh, last Sunday, mm -hmm. and the men started talking about it. And um, some men started bringing up these exact same points, and I was like, wow, this is so weird. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at Texas Mom, and I'm like, wow, well, we were literally just talking about this two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so we started talking about it. We started talking about the paradoxical issues. We started talking about the confliction. And, and all of these men, their wives had covered. Yes. So. All these, all the, all the men's wives had covered. Right. And um, so we started talking about it. Then we started talking about 1 Corinthians 11 in light of context with the assembly. If you keep reading down, you have the Lord's Supper. And um, four or five weeks ago, um, there was preaching on, you know, what the local church is mm -hmm. and what church is and the local church issue versus the Catholic issue versus the invisible universal versus the real and how, for one, a church is not just a gathering of believers because if the church was a gathering of believers... Um, that creates paradoxical problems. So we understand that a church begets a church. You know, Christ founded his church when he chose his 12 apostles. And um, he founded his church and the gates of hell will never prevail against those churches. And a church begets a church begets a church. And that's how churches grow. And that's how churches spread. And that's, and the ministry. And the men are ordained and sent. Yes. Hands are laid on them, they're ordained, they're examined, they're ordained, and they're sent. And we see that from the apostles to the 120 and to the 70, go ye into all the world to preach the gospel, baptizing them. And, you know, we know that we're all baptized into one body, not some Eucharist, not some mystical universal body, right? We're baptized into the local body, so we see how... Baptism is tied to church membership. And so when you look at these things all in light and in direct application of how it's stated with the assembly mm -hmm. in the church, just like you can't sit down at your evening table with your family and take the Lord's Supper or you take that ordinance that was commanded to... Yeah, and you can go back, and I, I already covered the paradoxical problems with that position. Yeah. And, yeah, you can go back and listen to... And, and see, that's part of the problem is when uh, precept upon precept, mm -hmm. line upon line, here a little, there a little, you have to, if your position creates a paradoxical, paradoxical unattainable position... You, women cannot be held to a different standard than men. No. So you can't say... He has to be always in prayer and constant in prayer and always ready to pray. Then he could never have his head covered. Ever. A man could never cover his head. And we see these other communities, like the Mennonite community, right? And this is their position. that, And this is why they cover all the time. Mm -hmm. But yet their men wear hats. Mm -hmm. Which would be a hip, hypocritical antithetical position which you know and so that's where we all started talking about this and um and the men had different thoughts and ideas on it and hey goop so this is what happened last week and so this is where we're at and we all talked about it and we all agree and and the main point I want to make well, is... What we all agreed on was that the covering was for the local assembly for when we're assembled. And it's to show headship. And that's it. It's not... Um, the rest of the time, you have your natural covering, you have your hair. And it's that simple. It was, it was just for... It's not for a show... It's not for a testimony. It's not for always being constant in prayer. It's not for um, modesty. It's not for any of these other really good biblical ideas all and very concepts. Good things, yeah. But they weren't ever tied to the head covering um, 
in First Corinthians and and even in Scripture. I mean, right. it just they're great ideas, and they and I clung to these ideas because I was zealous. I, and for over seven years, I've covered my head full time, and good things have come from it, which kind of just kept confirming. It would be like if you kept a Levitical diet, right. and you saw these health benefits. Exactly, and and you know, and I say that with a lot of um, the Old Testament, um, there is an incredible amount of um, wisdom in. The cleanliness laws, right, that the Jews were required to keep. There's a lot of wisdom in the right. Levitical diet. There's benefits to it. There's benefits to it. Now, are we required to do that stuff? Absolutely not, right? We are under the law of liberty. That liberty is not a close, a cloak of maliciousness or lasciviousness. We do not use our liberty and our grace as a cloak. Shall we continue in sin? God forbid. But... What happens is exactly what the Judaizers and the Judaism did is, okay, well, if we're not supposed to do this, we have to define it to the infinitesimal. So this way we know that we're not breaking the law. And this is what really, you know, because we get the questions all the time. Oh, well, when should girls start to cover? Right. And... Why don't you cover all your hair? Right. And, and we just felt like, or I felt like, I had taken all of these ideas and I had added to Scripture. Scripture is simple. It's It was very simple what Paul was asking for the church to do as an ordinance for the church. And I felt like I just had added to it, you know. And it would be just like if I was saying... That's awesome. I want to do the Lord's Supper every single day at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And it would have been like, wait a minute. Like, no, it wasn't for every single day at lunchtime. Like, it's just a special thing set apart for the assembly. Yeah, just like you can't, oh, well, well, my kid got saved, so I'm going to baptize my kid in the pool in my backyard. I mean, no, there was there is power and authority on who it has the authority to do that. And, you know... There's order. Seven years ago, Texas mom came to me and she was like, you know, I feel really convicted that I should do this. And I said, look, I'm like, if you're, if you're convicted that you should do it, you should do it, you know, and I'm not going to stop you. And, um, I saw all the positive intrinsic benefits of her doing it. The inward modesty that it produced. Yeah. And I saw a lot of value to it. And when we would have to go somewhere, there was never all this angst and about my hair and it not cooperating and all this stuff and I was like man this is great yeah put anything on your head let's just can we can we leave now you know what I mean mm -hmm. and uh, so I saw all these great things and I conflated them as validation you know like right. well yeah this is yeah this is great right. you know yeah. and so for seven years you know we've been doing this yeah. And when I went back and looked just recently in the past uh, week here on um, actual history um, in the Anabaptist churches and, you know, what we would call our heritage that, um, you know, and our um, lineage maybe of believers, you know, they only covered for the assembly. That was the only time they covered. So... Um, that was up until like the 1800s and then society started to very much shift and change drastically with feminine issues and all that kind of stuff that came into play. So, but up until that point, women only covered for the assembly, even um, with uh, the Anabaptists and the Baptists. And then we know up until like 50 years ago, um, women did cover for the assembly. It didn't really matter what you were. Um, what kind of denomination generally all women covered during the assembly and a lot of little girls were covered and, during the assembly and that's what and that's it really but, got me in the beginning because I would go back and look at all these historical things and I mean it's absolutely absolutely proven fact right. and and we can look at um, uh, ancient Christians like you, we, you can go back to Tertullian and mm -hmm. you can look at you know Polycarp and um, other uh, brethren that were that held 
non-heretical positions. You know, there, there's plenty of quote-unquote Christians throughout history. I mean, some people think Augustine was a Christian, and uh, even Spurgeon. Yeah, I have, I have Reformed brothers that would think that I I don't from from my readings of Calvin and Luther, I don't even believe they were Christian, and I know a lot of people think that's crazy. Uh, a lot of people think C.S. Lewis is a Christian. He was a Gnostic, um, and people are attracted to these people because they say very deep and intriguing spiritual things, but it doesn't make you a Christian. Right. But anywho, okay. And I think, um, so someone wants to know, what about the angels? Okay. And I know that has been brought up before, and I think that, because um, I know what you're saying is that the angels are around us all the time, so you should be covered up because of the angels. But again, I think that's adding to scripture. Is, yeah. um, if you read that chapter in context, it's talking about the assembly, it's talking about ordinance for the church. The rest of the chapter is all about church and ordinance for the churches. And um, we, I don't want to add to it anymore. The angels do desire to look into the things that are going on when the church is assembled, and I'm just going to take it at that, that that's when I'm supposed to be covered. And personally... The rest of the time I'm covered. I have a natural covering. I am covered. The Lord gave us hair for a covering. So Right, and, and even when the guys were discussing this, you know, um, one of the guys had a personal... Um, opinion and conviction about not putting your hair up and for lots of and I totally disagreed with it you know because it was more of a masculine kind of thing and you should since your hairs are covering you gotta let it down and the head covering is not a hair covering so you, you know so we we don't we can't define it we can't yeah, add to it you the, the whole entire point is it's not to define it and make all these rules and legislation and litigation you take it exactly for what it is. It's exactly like the Godhead, you know. It's like the Trinity, and so many people turn heretical trying to either define the Trinity or to explain it away and how God is not three in one. And you know, and I don't need to get. And I'm sure there's a hundred people in here that believe that the Trinity is some kind of Catholic doctrine, and they disagree. I'm not going to go down that rabbit trail. Um, but there is three in one, and that is doctrine. And if you don't believe in the eternal sonship of Christ, you probably are not saved because that's who Christ is. But, um, okay. Right. Um, um, trying to see. Uh, yeah, so we are saying that it's just for the assembly, and we it's not our job to define all the ins and outs of it, how much hair should be covered, all of those Somebody is saying that Mary Magdalene was set apart to do that, but the pr see the problem is that she was, and she was naked, okay? She was naked in front of all the disciples. She was immodest and naked in front of the disciples. She was uncovered, and that's not look. It's it can't be. Well, it's humility. It's not not according to application. It's nudity. Right. And if we go back and look at church history, real church history, you know, I clung to these things. Like, I clung to the newer teachings of the Mennonites and the Anabaptists today. I clung to a lot of Jewish teachings. Right. And it sounds good. It really, really sounds good. And if you're desiring to please the Lord and you're desiring modesty and covering up and keeping things special for your husband and all of that, it sounds so good and reasonable. But yet, like... And I, I even saw somebody say, you know what? Yeah, I don't think you should cover your head full time, but I cover my hair because I know that it's a problem for me because I care too much and think about my hair. Good for you. Like right. that, you know, you're not saying that this is the biblical, like because of these verses or because of this or that, right. you're not adding to scripture. That's different. And, and I was doing it because I thought I was um, commanded to do it by scripture. So there's a difference between um, just make it, you know, like when we did Christmas all those years right. and we thought that we were doing it as unto the Lord. Yeah, we would say, hey, and, and we did. We did Christmas without any gifts. And we did it simply. And without a tree. The last yeah, few yeah, years that yeah. we did it, we did it very simply, and we did think about the Lord and, and think about Jesus and all of that. But when we looked at the Bible in its simplicity, 
I mean, yeah, we have the birth of Christ and, and the story in Luke and everything, but but we didn't have all the extra. Like, we added. We added all of that. Like, so was it sin? No, I'm not saying that I sinned in the last seven years. I just think that I did something that was not required of me. And in doing that, I shared that conviction with a lot of you. And I am very sorry if that led to and this is the other part i think we should go into and, well somebody just asked are you going to leave those videos up all and we're the, not all the videos are down to my knowledge we're taking those videos down because um because where it leads to and we're right. going to talk about we talked about yeah. the good and all the positive of it very you know it's humbling it's modest sorry. it's there's a lot of good positive benefits to head covering it keeps you accountable there's all these things but they're adding to scripture. They're not biblical reasons. They're just good reasons. And then there's also negatives to head covering. And nobody really wants to talk about that. But I think we should talk about it just briefly because it's something that I have experienced. And every woman in the last couple weeks that I've talked to that are close with me, the head cover have all experienced these same legalistic Well, things. and we saw it on the channel a lot, and this is what's very interesting. And this was the other thing that bothered me a little bit with some of the stuff that Texas Mom was doing that I didn't really say, but like, okay, so you got this head covering. Well, then, well, you get a volumizer and you stuff stuff in it so that your head covering looks nicer. And I'm like, it, it still comes all back around to like vanity in the sense of the whole point that you're doing it is the cover, but then you're doing stuff to your cover, and then all these people say, oh, that looks so nice and so cute, and all these different things, and it really did, there was a lot of focus and attention on it, which kind of was counterintuitive to the whole purpose of it. Yeah, because it's only for praying and prophesying, and if you never take it off, um, it, it puts up this false pretense that I could always be praying and prophesying and that's kind of dishonest. I mean, I wasn't always praying and prophesying all day long. I, it, you know, it's adding, you yeah. know, it's just adding and if we have to be honest and I have exactly. to be honest with myself and and it's easier to put on a head covering and call it a day. It is. Like, there's a lot of wonderful things about it. There's a lot of things that it leads to that are ugly and legalistic and deceptive. Like I said, like say, like thinking that, oh, mommy's, you know, so always in prayer. And, and she's always, you know, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not. So if we take anything, you know... I mean, I can take verses about the Lord's Supper, and I can say, I'm going to commune with the Lord all the time, and they broke bread together. and all. This is why so many doctrines interlock, and when you understand what the church is, what the local ordained body of believers is that's set together in biblical order— you can't, like somebody referenced here, well, they were assembled when Mary Magdalene did that. Yeah, they were together as a group, but they were not assembled for church in the sense of they were not. Every time Christians are gathered, you know, and there's these different sayings like it, the church is not the building, we're the church. Totally true. But when a group of Christians gather, that's not the church because there isn't the church. Only if you're, you believe in an invisible, universal assembly that doesn't assemble, what me and Texas mom used to joke about as the unassembly of God, right? right? right. And, it's the ecclesia. It's right, it's the ecclesia. It's the called out assembly. Called out, locally gathered together, baptized into one body, right? Mm -hmm. Church membership. You're baptized into that body. You're not baptized into the invisible, mythical, universal Eucharist. And, you know, all these... Catholic, universal, invisible doctrines, and then the Protestant, invisible, I mean, visible, universal, you know, they twisted it, Calvin and Luther twisted it a little bit. Um, right. It's it, a called out assembly. You right. have to, it's a local call And it out assembles assembly. at certain times for certain reasons. There are ordinances that are performed 
by that ordained assembly that was ordained by a church that was ordained and sent. And we can look at Anabaptist history. We can look at church history. We can look at church history and we can see what happened and when they were covered. And there's a common use for coverings. I mean, there, there are um, cultures, there are fashions, there are all kinds of other reasons. There's weather. There's all kinds of other reasons that people cover up but the problem that I had is that I was tying my covering in with what was an ordinance for the church, and that's the problem. Like if I was tying the birth of Christ in with right. scripture, you can't. It's like taking any other church or ordinance and trying to practice it solo by yourself. No. And you can't do it. Why? Because you don't have the authority to do it. I'm and, and, you know, people bring this up about the head covering. Well, isn't it a picture of authority? Yeah, but what about the rest of the authority? You can't extract something uh, individually and give it its own authority when it's actually deriving its authority. The authority... From the husband. Correct. Right. Or from the assembly. Right. From the called out body. Right. You know, there's an order to that body. There's authority in the assembly. For example... Women are supposed to be quiet in the church. They're not permitted to speak in the church, right, in the assembly. Does that mean women can never talk? Of course not. And we know that. Nobody practices that. Nobody practices that when Christians gather together. Uh, church discipline, when, when a brother or sister in the assembly, not your neighbor next door, when brothers or sisters in the assembly are in sin, right, you go to them. And then if they don't hear you, you take the brother or sister. And if they don't hear them, you tell it to the church. That's church discipline. And then the church makes a decision collectively as a body. Okay, here's what we're going to do. It says, cast them out, right? The guy in 1 Corinthians sleeping with his dad's wife. Cast them out, deliver his body to Satan that is soul, you know, for the salvation of his soul. That man was restored to the assembly. Right. You cannot practice church discipline as like your Bible study at your kitchen table. No. You have no authority, right. no right. power. You can't go like rebuking people up the street. Like right. that's not your authority. And your yeah. So yeah, I mean, and there's teachers and there's pastors and elders. We know there's an order to things. There's qualifications for things. Right. There are women that claim to be pastors, but in accordance with Scripture, it's unscriptural. It's, it's, it, it's not scriptural. So you can't, you know, to say yeah. there are women pastors as a de declarative fact, I mean, there are women that claim to be pastors, but they're out of order. They're out of order. Right. And so that's why there can't be women right. pastors with they're biblical power because they're unqualified according to scripture. Right. Yeah. And now if you keep looking for a different version, I'm sure you can find a version that agrees with you, but. So was this my conviction and did my conviction change? Was this a conviction from God and then did it change? I would say it's still my conviction. I was, um, I was not um, applying scripture appropriately before. Not, like I said, like I don't believe that it was sin, but I don't believe that it was necessary. I believe that I added. Um, so it is still my conviction, very much so. I believe that I should be covered. I just believe that it should be in the assembly, privately in the assembly. That's it. So um, I still believe that the Lord did convict me to head cover. And um, well, I just know, got, and I, I started listening to other things and it just sounded good. And I started uh, adding that to scripture and that's what struck me is when i started listening to these judaizers and these hebrew roots guys and i saw them doing this stuff it just like i'm just like whoa man that's what's going on you know and that's when it hit me and that's when i brought it up to my wife you know and because I know everybody thinks I'm an ogre or whatnot, and, and we believe in patriarchy and uh, uh, emphatically. I mean, that's biblical order. The husband's the head of the house. Christ is head of the church. And if Christ isn't head of the church, then the husband's not the head. Uh, God established the home way before he established the church. You know, And that order, just like 
whatever you think the head covering is or isn't and how it symbolizes that, the man is the, you know, now, the man should give his life to his wife and family like Christ gave his life for the church. So it is. It's a life of self-sacrifice. There's a reason I don't play paintball every week. There's a reason I don't play tennis and basketball every week. There's a reason I don't play in five fantasy football leagues. You know, there's a reason for all that. And that's not even a sacrifice, y'all. I'm not even saying, oh, that's me sacrificing my life. It's not. But, what? Well, I'm an example to my children. Right. And I don't want my children doing that trash. And so, right. you know. It's um, dying to self on the yeah, yeah. Rising mud, let us let us back on, y'all. I I do want to say this real quick. I am very, I am very pl pleased of the environment that we have created on our channel, yeah. and everybody is being very kind. Yes, thank you all. And we appreciate it. Appreciate we the do. mods, but we yeah. we really appreciate the spirit. Yeah. On the the thread. This was a hard decision to come to. This was not something that we came lightly to. Obviously, I said it's been over seven years that I've been covering full time. And um, I think for the first two days, I was just totally shaken up inside and out. Like I did not know what, which way was up, but I want to obey the Lord. And I want, and Jesus is easy, y'all. Jesus ain't hard. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's easy and he's simple. And Paul and, didn't ask us to do anything hard. And the and the law of liberty, not not lawlessness, not lawlessness, the law of liberty replaced the old covenant and the old law. It says that it vanished away. It says that it was abolished. Now, does that make sin is still exceedingly sinful? All the sins in the Old Testament are named in the New Testament. Okay, they were re, uh, re-spoken. So they were not removed from the law of liberty. But we do have a liberty that is not all these do's and don'ts right. and this, you know, and how I, long should your ribbons yeah, be? And and how big should your phylacteries be? One of the things that the head covering did that was a negative that I can say, when I did it out of order, when I did it 20, you know, all day long, all waking hours, is that it kind of gave me a checklist like, um, okay, I put my head covering on, I'm covered, I'm good for the day. And now that I'm not wearing a head covering, I'm still covered, I have my natural covering, I have my hair, but um, now that I'm not wearing my head covering, all of these other more important issues of modesty, all of the, like, all of the really, really important issues of modesty, the Lord has just taught me so much in these past couple weeks, like, just making me search my heart and figure out, like, where do you stand on all of yeah, this he, stuff? He slows you, know? you down. You know, I was in this pig blind last night by myself for like hours, maybe like four hours. And it was just a great time. Just, uh, oh, well, it was beautiful out. Totally quiet. You hear a couple birds, but just got to read the Bible. And there wasn't any pigs. We did get some awesome pigs last night, but not for those first three or four hours. But, you know, and it, you just... You should look. It always says, "Let a man examine himself." Right? That that's how. Look, I got saved. You know, I I was born and raised in church. I got I made a profession of faith. What four or five times? I got baptized three times, and uh, well, I got um, or whatever. You know, I said this prayer and uh, born again and uh, saved by repentance and faith in Christ. Um, until 2016 you know and why because I was examining myself and I said why do I why do I continually struggle with these same sins over and over again why do I make place for them why do I make excuses and do them intentionally just to ask for forgiveness to do them again to ask for forgiveness we teach our kids that that doesn't work that doesn't Look, you can't just do it and then just say, I'm in light of these scriptures and saying, wait, my life. And and that first started 
when I started examining my own baptism and said, man, I don't even remember. I was so young. I didn't get to just sound doctor and just plain Jane biblical doctor. Not all this like crazy stuff and not all this um, eschatology, which all these things are good. I'm not saying, I'm not down, I'm not poo pooing any of this stuff, but understanding basic, 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 basic doctrine. And when you understand it, it will change your life and it might just save you for all eternity and you know that's what it did for me looking at these things and holding my life up to the light of scripture and saying wait a minute i claim to be saved i my heart i the whole chapter is about um when you're doing that then you're saying you have to be covered all the time when you're praying and that um, can become legalistic in that we have all experienced it as ladies that um, we want to pray. We want to cry out to the Lord and pray and ask Him something or whatever, just spend some time with the Lord, and we don't have our head covering on. It's the middle of the night or a baby sleeping next to you or whatever the circumstances, and you're in the shower, whatever, and you it's inconvenient to go get the head covering and cover up so what do you do you don't pray like i'm not saying in every situation but in a lot of times that was our experience but logically Many i mean of us we just like i can't pray a logical I, application of the previous you know obviously yeah i mean yeah it wouldn't be right it wouldn't be proper for me to pray to the lord and not be covered. and it's discounting the natural covering again and discounting so um that was one thing. Another thing that we experienced was, yeah, like, oh, my friend's coming over. Oh, gotta hurry up and put a head covering on. My neighbor's coming over. Gotta hurry up and put a head covering on. Not because I'm praying or prophesying. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with he might see me and I'm not covered. That's not the application. That's not, you know, found. There. Okay. They're hanging in there. Okay. See if it'll come back home without her. <laughs> there it is. We're back. Okay. What kind of covering do I use? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Correct. Y'all, it doesn't matter. That's, it doesn't, it's not even important. Um, yeah, uh, so that's basically it, y'all, I think. I mean, there was times, we can give so many examples of bad situations of head covering that, um, you know, like, when it's just done for an outward appearance versus biblical application i'll give you another great example of a misapplied application of scripture you know there's there's a part in scripture i think it's in first timothy right where it says the adorning of women let it not be with the plaiting of hair so you'll get these people you can't braid your hair right what's this what's the next what's it say next the putting on of apparel right right so if you're going to <laughs> we don't need a curling iron. I would like a curling iron. Don't send him a curling iron. Please, don't send him a curling iron. I would no, use it I mean, for that's a fruit-related the, the focus should not be on the outward. And I did feel like with the head covering at times, it did become an adornment. Like, like it became I better in a head covering than just my plain old hair. And that's... That's pride. That's that is being prideful. You know, that's being. Well, it's it's just confusion. You'll confuse yourself. You know, and and, and this is the other point that we would really like to make. All right, y'all. We're gonna try to. Mm, finishes it just does not want to let us stay on here but if you missed anything please go back start at the beginning and uh yeah we're not going to belabor the issue we're not going to make all these videos on it yeah, seek it out uh, for yourself and yeah and it and you know we we still believe in head covering yeah during the assembly yeah because it's in first corinthians 11 and you can't mix up the hair and the covering and the husband and the wife and all these different things. I mean, it's there. And it's for certain events, 
praying and prophesying. I mean, you can't take your hair off and put your hair back on. So, I mean, yeah. there's, it's. You have history to back that all right. that up. Right, right. So and it's there. Anything in addition to that is absolutely not there. Right. Just made up or it's like incorrect application of other vague scriptures and vague concepts that do not directly apply and are not stated. Right. Just like saying that your hair is your covering. No, that's the, that's the uh, what do you call that? Straw man. That's the straw man. Yeah, that's a total man. straw man. Yeah. And if you say, you know, if you're going to stop covering your head, you're going to start doing all this other stuff, that is a total straw man all argument. All my other modesty will stay the same. Yeah, and it's a straw man argument because we see lots of other modest, modest people that don't cover their head, that don't get divorced and whore around and smoke crack and all this other stuff. That, that is a total straw man argument, and it's because when you can't find conjunction scripture, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, you have to conflate things, and you have to draw broad assumptions that cannot be applied, or if they are attempted to be applied, they are paradoxical in nature, and you hold the woman to a different standard than the man. We don't see that in scripture. We see a hierarchy. We see that the man is the head and the woman is to submit to the man. But we do not see that there is a diff. God does not, there is, look, in what once you're saved and you're in the body of Christ and you're in the family of God, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither male nor female. Male. There's neither bond nor free. We are all at the foot of the cross. We are all on an equal playing field. We are all equal in the eyes of God. And uh, a man or a woman isn't more saved or less saved. A man or a woman isn't more humble or less humble or whatever. And every time a person uses the word humble or says that they're humble is an absolute sign that they're not. Humble people do not use the word because as soon as you recognize yourself as being humble, it's out of a position of pride thinking that you're humble. You know, God will humble you. Let let God worry about all that humble stuff. Because this is, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Ask somebody that knows. Right. You know, first person accounts here. But uh, We appreciate y'all. We just wanted to get on here and share um, our conviction. And like I said, we still believe in head covering. Right. Very much so. Yes. So, yeah, place. please don't misrepresent what we're saying. We're saying... In the organized, ordained assembly of God, which is his church that he established, that will go on uh, in proper biblical order through ordination, laying on hands, and church planting, churches planting, churches planting, churches, the gates of hell will not prevail against that. And there are certain ordinances for Christ's assemblies at given times for certain things. And... Not focusing on the outward appearance, Curved. focusing on the inward man. That's the that's the whole. I do want to okay. I do want to say this one modesty issue. Okay, regarding the head covering and hair is a distraction and hair is beautiful. Okay, your face is beautiful, your neck is beautiful, a woman is beautiful. Are you going to wear a burqa? Your eyes are beautiful. Are you going to veil your eyes? Are you going to wear a head to toe black night shade? with your eyes covered because if it's about veiling glory and about veiling beauty you have to put a trash bag over your body cut eye slits and then put screens over your eyes so that nobody is That's absolute truth I, I mean we just don't uh, no you it's don't see it in the not, scripture not in Christian history. because it's, if it's all about shrouding A lot of parts of a woman can be a distraction. Yes, my goodness. It, you know, parts of a woman that are even properly covered up can, can be. absolutely be a distraction. And and this was different things of questions that people brought up to us. Like, for example, somebody would ask me, well, when you see another woman with her hair uncovered, do you think she's nude? And I thought about it. And I'm like, well, no. I mean, you know, this is our conviction and this is what we hold to. But when I see another woman with long hair, I don't look at it. She's like immodest or nude. I, we never thought that. And and that's why a lot of people thought, oh, well, because uh, my wife covers her head, like we're judgmental and stuff. We, we never looked at anybody else like that. Even though we were holding this person, 
position. We never looked at, I never, I never looked at any, look at that whorish woman with long hair. Yeah. I never looked at it. I was always looking at myself, right. honestly, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, that's, that is really being honest. I mean, and, uh, and so I would get questions like that. And that made me kind of question the whole thing too, because I'm like, I didn't, you know, I, we were, we were, I was holding us to a higher standard than I, and you should hold yourself to a higher standard than you hold everybody else because what you're going to give an account I'm going to give an account for me my wife is going to give an account for herself I'm going to give an account for both of us because I'm the head I'm going to give an account for my kids I'm going to give an account for my wife but she is going to give an account for what she personally does and so and that's why I mean it would have been much easier to just be like this is what we do I'm not changing it it works there's all these great benefits to it I have all these reasons dude I got a 20 page report with pictures that I need to take down still like I dove into this thing and wanted to do it as unto the Lord and I wanted to obey scripture so um, yeah, I, I understand all the reasoning and the logic and all of it, but I, when I open the book, it's not in there. And when I look at history, really, somebody makes a really good really point about either. the Judy, the, the, you know, Orthodox Jewish women that cover their hair with a beautiful $10,000 wig. And that's just exactly the total point, because by according to the letter of the law, they're following it implicitly when it comes to covering their hair, but they're doing it as a shroud, as a cloak. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, these things will become a cloak right. of or, maliciousness, or it's just, even even though you don't even realize it. When you're doing it all the time, it loses for it. It's just it's just all the just time. like putting on a pair. Right. It just would be like doing it's a the uniform. Lord's Supper every single morning. Right. Yep. It, it, it kind of starts to lose the specialness of it, you know? So, yeah. So anyway, that's it, y'all. And as far as hair being a distraction, if the hair will distract you, eyes will distract you, neck will distract you, even a modestly shrouded uh, silhouette of the body that's properly modestly shrouded will distract you if you want it to distract you. No, it's not a it's not a license to let people be lascivious. No. Okay. We've never had this much buffering um, like ever. The sea death pill. What is what that? Is that input on the sea death? Oh, we're back. We're back. It's the sea death. Would love you guys to give input on. Sea death. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure. But yeah, and that's what I, you know, I looked to a lot of different people that had a lot of good points. And um, like I said, I experienced a lot of um, the legalities uh. of it too. And um, We're, we'll talk about the abortion bill on the Texas Millennial. I think the Texas Millennial will be back from his travels abroad. He's overseas now because he is just an independently wealthy multi dollar heir. All right. <laughs> so, y'all, that's it. It's humbling. I, I love um, the Lord and I. We know that we're not. Wow. Okay, I'm not going to keep arguing that we still had cover because it's like. Yeah. All right. My All right, y'all. We're going to try to uh, elk and anchor. What's up? We're praying for y'all. Yes. We appreciate. Hey, we. I appreciate your testimony, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, we appreciate that testimony video, and we are praying, and our friends are praying for y'all, and yeah. Everybody needs to be praying for Elk and Anchor Homestead. Go check them out if yeah, you have Yeah, please go it. to subscribe to those guys. Beautiful family. Please subscribe to our great friend Rain Country mm -hmm. and the 1870s Homestead. I and think they're on here. And go listen to Elk and Anchor Homestead's uh, video on his testimony. Yeah, awesome. Amazing. Totally yep. amazing. Go, please go subscribe to Daddy Curbs. And okay. Like we're doing any more videos. Yeah, and you were saying that until it rudely cuts you off. Rudely, you hear that YouTube? Hello? Hey, YouTube. There we go. <laughs>
this is it y'all we just wanted to move on and we're not going to be focused on the outward appearance we are moving on Y'all will not be seeing me head cover anymore. I'm not doing any in the privacy of the assembly. And so I hope you all were blessed by this. Um, and um, Who are you, Baptist? Uh oh, we're Baptist. <laughs> like John. Sorry. <laughs> You're glad we're seeing things more clearly. Well, thank you for the veiled insult. <laughs> I always love those like veiled insults that are supposed to be like compliment. Uh, we never, I never pick up on the irony of those. Okay. We'll see y'all. Hope y'all have a good night. I figured it would just cut us off, but it hasn't. <laughs> it probably won't now. It'll probably play for a while. We'll just keep saying good night. Yes. Bye. We will see y'all. Y'all have a great night. I want to thank our moderators, 1870s, We Tree, Rain Country. Uh, let's see, who else? Hey, and we thank the civility of the, yeah. it was, it was very encouraging and kind of incredible, honestly. And, um, Hartway Farms and We Tree Daddy Curbs, Rain Country, you said all those. And all of the regulars, you all know who you are. Mm -hmm. Music and, Well. Yeah, Music Well, sorry. And, and of course, I'm going to forget somebody. Homestead Remembrance. Homestead Remembrance. Pam Darso. Home life together. Watch, it'll probably just Pretty keep going Taylor. for forever. We'll, just keep, <laughs> we'll shout it all out. Mm. All right, y'all. We hope you have a great night. Pray you have a good Lord's Day tomorrow. And uh, we just hope that this, well, it, hopefully it helps you. And, and hopefully, I don't know, God's good. He'll use it for his glory. And... You know, what else are we going Goob's been a super trooper and literally putting in like 100 hours of tech garbage sitting, talking to some dude in India to try to fix Adobe Premiere. And I cannot be more disappointed with an incredibly terrible package there. It's terrible. It was, it's terrible. Um, I'm not going to say avoid Adobe Premiere, but it's been terrible. We have a decent laptop and it's horrible. And we do spend more, we spend at least almost once a week with tech help. Yeah. So and it's despicable. Tomorrow.